One race remains on the NHRA Pro Mod calendar, and four drivers are still in contention for the championship. Mike Janice's Camaro leads the pack with a pair of Corvettes, driven by Troy Coughlin and Bob Ram, just behind. And lurking as a dark horse is the always dangerous Ricky Smith, who will come up aces in Vegas and become champion. You'll find out next. Within the NHRA is a class of car that defies convention. Door slammers with nitrous, turbos, blowers. These are the Mavericks. This is Pro Mod. Welcome everybody to Bruton Smith's fabulous strip at Las Vegas Motor Speedway for the final event of the 2015 JNA Services Pro Modified Tour on the NHRA Mellow Yellow Series. Indeed, this race will crown the world champion for this season, but bear in mind, two drivers have stepped up above the crowd to produce a whale of a point battle here at the end of the season. First, Mike Janis in his supercharged Chevy Camaro to Buffalo, New York, has posed a formidable challenge to Troy Coughlin, the 2012 NHRA JNA Services World Champion, who's looking to become one of three drivers who have won the series twice. Now, bear in mind, Vegas has one tricky aspect. 2,400 feet above sea level elevation makes this a track for cars with artificial atmospheres. That means the nitrous oxide injected and turbocharged cars seem to do better at this strip in the rare air. But the weather conditions have been better than normal and not qualified going into the final session, Don Walsh and Harry Ruska's twin turbocharged Camaro unleashed this earth-shaking run. 5.77 seconds at an incredible 259 miles per hour. I've gotten congratulations from a few competitors. I'm sure we have a few that are up in arms right now over that last round. The car felt better than it's ever felt from the day it was built. So it was a, obviously it was a great run. And on top of all that, in a unique scenario, the first round of eliminations will be run under the lights in even better atmospheric conditions. So it'll be Pete Farmer, past runner up this year in the CRC Brake Clean Dodge Charger against Canadian Eric Latino on the Quality Plus Compressors Chevy Camaro in the far lane. What a drag race to start things off. Farber drives around a whole shot to win it in an incredibly close battle. Waiting for him at the top end is our own Mike English. Pete Farber out of that CRC Brake Clean Dodge Daytona. Nine thousandths at the stripe, and that was very important points-wise. It was, because uh, we, we want to stay in top ten. It's very important for our sponsors that are here this weekend in Las Vegas. Beautiful city that we got going here in NHRA race. And uh, I don't know, I never saw him. <laughs> That'll bring up the man currently ranked number four in points, Bob Ram, and his Michigan-based nitrous oxide-injected Corvette against this guy, the man with all the weight of the world on his shoulders. Mike Janis, the point leader in his Lucas Oil-sponsored Camaro, must keep winning rounds to stay in the point lead. And interestingly, his opponent, Bob Ram, is happy that he's racing the number one point driver in the first round. Unbelievable. You know what I mean? Control your own destiny. What more could you ask for? You know what I mean? It's... It's going to be fun, you know, really. I've admired Mike a long time. They're great people, but, you know, this is business out here now. And what is Mike Janice's mindset for this final race of the year? i got to be on the tree. It's, everything has to go right. I mean, there's no, there's no layback runs. And we're feeling good about it. Ram, who won the first race of the year, is trying to advance from his fourth place position. Janice has to get a win light. It's simple. Troy Coughlin Sr. is right on his tail. Janice leaves first, but he's all over the racetrack. And Ram drives past at the finish line. A stunning upset as the point leader loses in the opening round, even when he had a commanding lead. To add insult to a mortal wound, Janice had an unprecedented 15 hundredths of a second hole shot on Ram. Any full throttle run should have won. I know you're disappointed, but you said it got loose. I think that was a little bit more than loose. Yeah, but I thought, uh, I thought for sure we had the wall there. It, I, it kept going to the right. I couldn't bring it back, and it finally just turned on me. You know, uh, it, it had my uh, attention for sure. Now, the points you have to sit and watch yeah, Troy to, Coughlin. Watch this next round here and uh, keep our fingers crossed. Uh, Troy's having a good weekend so far, so I think we got our hands full. And that leaves the door open for number two points man Troy Coughlin in the Jegs Corvette, who will tell you he doesn't feel any pressure. Usually kind of kick back with the kids here and hang out, listen to music, play cards, lie and tell stories to each other, just kind of the, you know, just kind of hang out. And then when they call us up, then all the butterflies and the adrenaline just goes. 
blows up. I, it definitely needs a little pressure on them. I don't have a lot of pressure. I get to go out there and have fun. And if uh, we can do our job and put them away, that'd be great. It'd be exciting racing. And uh, we just go, get to go and have fun today. So they got all the pressure. We get all the, pr the, the pleasure. The only driver who told the truth in those interviews was Danny Rowe on the right side of your screen who doesn't have any points at stake. Troy Coughlin is losing his mind as he stages up to try and take advantage of Janice's loss. Here comes the turbo car and Coughlin wins. He now moves within one round, one win light of Mike Janice. Well, Mr. Troy Coughlin, you told us back in the pits that you were all fun and games back there. But when you get in this car, you get in the zone. Did you get any more pressure when you saw Mike Janice go out? Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, hats off to Mike. What a season they've had. And to go down like that is pretty, uh, pretty tough. But I tell you, I couldn't be more excited about this Jigs.com car and Steve Petty and all the guys at ProLine, all my family back home. Just need to keep cruising along here, but so far, so good. A great job by Troy Coughlin of completely avoiding the question. The next pair up, Robert Patrick's nitrous Ford Mustang from Maryland takes on Brazil's Sidney Frigo. His Artie Vincho Chevy Corvette is his newest ride from his old top fuel dragster. A great drag race, whoa, way over to the wall was Frigo, but he actually pulls out the win. Patrick obviously had worse problems. We're only halfway through the first round of eliminations. Coming up, the battle continues. Welcome back to the NHRA JNA Service Pro Modified Drag Racing Series presented by Aeromotive and brought to you by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. By Precision Turbo and Engine, the winning edge in boosted performance. By Aeromotive, serious fuel systems for pro mods to hot rods and everything in between. The stunning nighttime view of the strip in Las Vegas from the strip at Las Vegas. We're ready to continue round number one of eliminations here at the final NHRA Pro Modified Drag Race of the Year. In the near lane, Dan Stevenson and his Chicago based nitrous car, which had some problems in qualifying. We've been down all but the last pass where the rear end decided it didn't want to go for a ride. And at that point, it's like you're it's on an ice skating rink at you know 100 plus miles an hour. It was no fun. Hurt the rear end and the transmission and the drive shaft, but we have spares, so we're in good shape. Stephen Whiteley's supercharged Cadillac CTSV is in the far lane. And remember, Don Walsh led this field by seven hundredths, but number two through number 16 are separated by only a tenth. Anybody can win here. Whiteley's out in front. And he stays there by a car length all the way down. The recent pole qualifier at the St. Louis event is riding a wave. Stephen Whiteley, uh, you made some changes in your crew a couple races ago, and it has paid dividends, man. 586. <laughs> that would have ran, man. Well, uh, I, I can't give enough credit to my team. Jeff, Jim, Robert, guys, uh, I wouldn't replace you for anyone. And. Uh, Let's win this thing. There's Khaled Al Belushi, past pro modified world champion. There's Ricky Smith, the two time and defending world titleist. Nitrous Camaro versus supercharged version of the same body style. And Ricky Smith had something to do with both of them. The ironic thing is, I just went over and helped Belushi and him straighten out their car yesterday. And uh, Cage kind of pays me off and on to help them, you know, back and forth, and they've been struggling. So Frank come up and asked me to help them. I went down and helped them, and they're third, and I look who I got to run for as round as them. Strange situation. Remember, Khaled Al Belushi has Frank Ace Manzo tuning his supercharged Camaro, but Ricky Smith, the nitrous legend, is helping Manzo tune the blown car. But right now, they're not friends. They're definite enemies. Somebody will advance to the next round, and Ricky Smith is still looking for points. What a drag race, but Belushi upsets Ricky Smith. The car that Ricky helped get to the line wins even after Ricky's hole shot. Khaled Al Belushi with that tune up, that Frank Manzo tune up. Ricky Smith comes over and gives you high fives there, but man, career best 582. Ricky was out on you, but you run him down. Yeah, but uh, here's what it is, you know. 
we've been we've been fighting a little bit with 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 the car finally we figure everything and frank muzo he figured how to run the car and i think we are we, we got a hard rod to start the race with this week up next is only the second appearance this year for the man who stunned the world by winning the u.s nationals in a massive surprise rick snavely I don't know if it all ever set in completely, but I mean, it was just every time you think about it, it's incredible. I mean, just to be able to just to be able to be there and be part of it. I mean, it's, you know, the history of that whole thing and then and then uh, to pull off what, what this team pulled off is incredible. Snavely was the number two qualifier, seven hundredths of a second behind leader Don Walsh, but he did run 257 miles per hour. He's racing Chip King and his Jason Hamster tuned Dodge Charger. But this one is the turbo car from California. Obviously, King was all over the place, but another 257 mile an hour pass on the top end. Well, Mr. Rick Snavely, what happened on the starting line there, man? A ton of smoke coming out of this car. Yeah, we, uh, right before we came up, we, we fired it up to warm it up and uh, noticed he was smoking out this side here. We didn't have a whole lot of time to do anything about it. I guess we got to go back and do a little work right now. As the next pair backs up to the starting line in the far lane, it will be bump spot qualifier, Texas veteran Jeff Neiser, whose nitrous oxide injected Chevy Camaro during qualifying took a trip out into the Nevada desert. She fell on the wheelie bars and uh, it got the brakes real hot. When it does that, you have no brake pedal. So went in the uh, sand and we got all the rocks out, bled the brakes, put some more brake fluid and we'll be good to go. As the dead last qualifier in the field, Neiser must take on in the near lane the quickest and fastest pro modified on the planet in NHRA competition. It's Don Walsh and Harry Ruska's twin turbocharged Camaro. Walsh goes 204.7 miles per hour at the eighth mile, faster than even his 259 mile an hour run, but pulls the chutes early. Donnie Walsh going to round number two, and boy, I, I hate to bring it up, but it's been a while, but what happened? You were only 216 miles an hour, 587, by the way. We shut it off a little early. A couple of people have gone in the sand. If you haven't run in the dark down here, it gets it looks pretty pretty scary down here. So I shut it off a little bit early, try and keep the thing together for tomorrow. Wait a minute, a pro mod driver that's scared? <laughs> Not scared, don't want to tear up equipment. Okay, that works. Good job, man, good job. Indeed, Don Walsh goes to the next round with a solid car. Remember, there are three turbo machines, four supercharged entries, and the lone nitrous car of Bob Ram remaining. And we still haven't determined the world champion. Stay with us. Welcome back to the NHRA JNA Services Pro Modified Drag Racing Series presented by Aeromotive. As the jets from nearby Nellis Air Force Base thunder overhead, the ground shakes here at the Strip at Las Vegas as we ready ourselves for the second round of eliminations here at the final drag race of the 2015 series for the JNA Services Pro Modified Tour. There's the number one qualifier and now the fastest NHRA Pro Modified ever, Don Walsh at the wheel of Harry Ruska's twin turbocharged Camaro that went 259 miles per hour in qualifying. Alongside him, Pete Farber, a past winner on the NHRA Tour, already a finalist this year with his CRC brake clean, supercharged, methanol burning Dodge Daytona Charger. The drivers creep forward into the staging beams to begin this second round. We're down to the final four cars and the world championship has yet to be decided. The turbo car stages first. Farber takes his time and is now ready at a red light start for the number one qualifier. And whatever game Pete Farber was playing absolutely positively worked. He'll head down to the top end to meet our own Brian Loans. You knew that thing was a big stout car in the other lane. You had this thing tuned up pretty well. Uh, we just went back to what we started with. You know, you get you get excited when you're running a car that can go 577 at 259, covers us by 15 miles an hour. I mean, like you got to kind of stand on it, but you don't want to trip over your shoes. And now the next race will determine the 2015 NHRA Pro Modified World Championship. Troy Coughlin Sr. needs to win this race in order to beat Mike Janis out of the World Championship. Janis is waiting on the top end of the racetrack. He knows if Coughlin loses, he wins the NHRA World title for the first time. Will Coughlin admit he feels the pressure now? It was tough to sleep last night. It's, you know, the whole butterflies thing just starting all over again this morning. I mean, Jex.com cars got great opportunities here to, uh, to make a big move for the championship, but we've got a huge hurdle in front of us, which is another turbocharged Corvette, just like ours. One race will crush one man, 
and elevate another to the highest level in NHRA Pro Modified Racing. The spoiler is Brazil's Sydney Frigo in the white Corvette in the far lane. Here we go. Troy Coughlin wins his second NHRA Pro Modified World Championship, snatching the victory from the hands of Mike Janis. What an incredible finish to the year. In replay, Frigo had the whole shot and was ahead at the 330 foot mark. They were even at the half track point, but Coughlin thundered to the win and tremendous sportsmanship being demonstrated by both those legends at the top end. Now bear in mind, Bob Ram and his nitrous injected Michigan Corvette still has a slim mathematical chance of winning the world championship if Coughlin were to lose in the next round and Ram would win the race and set a new world record. Standing between Ram and that theoretical shot at the championship is U.S. Nationals winner Rick Snavely, who has been consistently three or four hundredths quicker than Ram all weekend long. Down at the top end of the racetrack, Troy Coughlin is watching the outcome of this race to see if his world championship is going to be deemed official right here. Oh, yeah. Yeah! Woo! Yes! Snavely beats Ram. And Troy Coughlin is officially a two-time NHRA Pro Modified World Champion with Crew Chief Steve Petty. That is it, man. That is your second series championship, 2012 and now 2015, and you had to come in here, and you did with the job you needed to do. I'll tell you what, I'm, I'm so excited. You know, we've got a lot of family here and stuff like that, so it's plenty awesome, and I can't wait to get to the banquet tonight and get home. And my brother started a championship ring a couple years ago, actually a long time ago. And every time we've won a championship, we add a stone to it. And it's, uh, it's pretty emotional. One more race to determine our semifinalist. Stephen Whiteley's Cadillac CTSV takes on Kaladal Belushi's Camaro in a battle of supercharged methanol burners. Belushi, the past world champion, is out in front. And he will advance with the quickest run of the round. That means the semifinal round will give us two supercharged cars and two turbo machines in battle. Meanwhile, the World Championship is being celebrated by Justin Bieber, Brandon Stroud, Kyle Pettis, and Mike Rees, all members of that man's crew, World Champ Troy Coughlin Sr. Welcome back to the NHRA JNA Services Pro Modified Drag Racing Series presented by Aeromotive and brought to you by the School of Automotive Machinists, education at full speed. By JNA Service, a leader in oil and gas well servicing and exploration. And by Aeromotive, serious fuel systems for pro mods to hot rods and everything in between. We're down to the final four here at the Strip in Las Vegas with Pete Farber's supercharged Dodge Daytona getting ready to take on the man who has just crowned the new world champion, Troy Coughlin in the Jakes.com turbocharged Corvette. Bear in mind, he is now a two-time world title holder, but there's also a race to be won. Pete Farber has been in a final round already this year. Coughlin has been in a final round already this year. Somebody will advance to yet another at the conclusion of this quarter mile sprint. Whoa, out of shape and over the center line. Coughlin is out, Farber advances. And amazingly, Troy Coughlin will have won a world championship without ever winning a national event in the season. The front wheels were up in the air, no way to steer. When he finally landed, Coughlin clipped one of the timing pylons, but probably wasn't too upset about Farber's win. So you knew coming into this, another big turbo car in the other lane and another win for a blower car. You think it's going to be an all-blower final, or are you going to be looking down that uh, turbo car of Snavely? Well, I hope I get Belushi, because I'd rather run a blower car than those cheating turbo cars. <laughs> Well, Kalanau Belushi and his crew chief, Ace Manzo, would love to be in the final round, considering they haven't visited that round yet this season. Indy winner Rick Snavely and the incredible turbocharged 257 miles per hour turbo direct Camaro is a formidable foe. The turbo car and the blown car wait patiently. Finally, the turbo car stages first. Belushi follows. 
and they leave the line together. A great drag race, but it will be an all supercharged final round. Kellen Abelushi advances to his first final of the year with a great run. Meanwhile, world champion Coughlin is all smiles. Pro Mod 101 is brought to you by Precision Turbo and Engine. Here you have a lot of horsepower in this turbocharged car. What do you do for electrical power? Well, electrical power, we just use a regular 12-volt battery. That's not a regular battery, Harry. This is a lithium-iron battery. It weighs, uh, well, here, feel it, Ted. You're kidding. Not quite five pounds. It's 540 cranking amps. It's newer technology, and the cool thing about it is the safety safari is really happy about it because it won't catch on fire. We like it because it's green. Once its life cycle is over, you can throw it in the trash right to the landfill. Wow, you know, Detroit needs to get onto this. Can you imagine a Chevy Volt with these instead of lithium ion that they've had a fire problem with? And hopefully our racing programs will go back into the OE passenger cars. Well, you know, there are a lot of things on your daily driver that came from the racetrack. That's why you watch Pro Mod 101. It is time for the final drag race of the 2015 NHRA Pro Modified Series. Two supercharged methanol burning race cars, Pete Farber's CRC Brake Clean Dodge and Khaled Al Belushi's AAP Supercharged Camaro will guarantee us an amazing statistic of parity in the Pro Mod class, giving us 10 different winners in 10 different events. It's a great drag race. But Kellen Abelushi, the 2011 Pro Modified World Champ and past top fuel dragster standout, wins the final round of 2015. Kellen Abelushi, 585.4, 245 miles an hour. You put away a tough customer and Pete Farber in the final. Yeah, uh, really, well, I think the, the main thing, we've been lucky this week and uh, everybody been working hard in our team to put this car together. I really appreciate everybody been been helping us from from my crew chief, all the crew guys, and Adam from Precision Turbo, Ricky Smith, everybody been working with us to, to keep this car in a winner's circle today. You want parity in the top three positions in the final point standings. It was a turbocharged car followed by a supercharged car followed by two nitrous oxide injected racers in just a matter of rounds. Thanks for being with us in the 2015 season.